Hello guys, um, this is Dr. Thompson. Um, basically today, I'm going to teach you how you can write urgent referral or transfer letters. Okay? Um, because some students usually find this very challenging and difficult. But at the end of this lecture, you should be able to write this effectively. So what I'm going to do, I'm first of all going to um, show you how you can identify urgent letter, tell you how you can organize urgent letters, and then we are going to use a case note, select appropriate information, organize this information, and then use this information to form complete sentences um, that will give us our letter for the day. All right, if you are just uh, visiting my channel for the first time, I would really recommend you hit the subscribe button below so that whenever I release any let any um, tutorial, you will be the first to be notified. Okay, so let's um, get started. So first, what I'm going to do now is to show you how you can identify urgent letters. When case notes are given to you, you need to check the case notes to see if that case note is an urgent one or a non-urgent one. If you're asked to write a referral letter or a transfer letter, you really need to check. If it is clearly stated in the writing task that you should write urgent letter, it means that letter is an urgent one. In that case note is an urgent one. They might not ask you to write urgent letter. You might just be asked to write that letter and the letter is going to the emergency department but they didn't state it's an urgent letter. This also means that letter is an urgent one. So even if urgent, uh, that word urgent was not used in the case note, but letter is going to the emergency department, please know that that letter is an urgent one. Point number one might not be there. Point number two might not be there, but point number three might be there. You might be asked to write a letter to a healthcare worker on duty or on shift. Okay, this healthcare worker may be a doctor, a nurse, or any other healthcare professional in the healthcare setting. All right, so that means that that patient is going right away to see the, um, the reader. It makes that letter an urgent one. Point number three may not also be there. One to three may not be there, but you are asked to write this letter so that this patient will be admitted and stabilized. In that case, it makes that letter an urgent one. If you cannot find point number one, you cannot find point number two, point number three, or point number four, please treat that letter as a non-urgent letter. Okay? Don't use your medical knowledge or your nursing knowledge to, to decide if a letter is an urgent one or a non-urgent one. Rather, look out for any of these four points. All right. So next... I'm going to show you how you can organize your letters, whether urgent referral letters, urgent transfer letters. This is how you organize these letters. Look at the left side of your screen. Look at these arrows here. First, you start from the introduction. Next, you move on to the current situation. Then you discuss how the problem or the situation started and how it has progressed so far. Then you move on to let the reader know some information, some background information regarding this, um, some background information of this patient. And finally, you make your recommendations. Please note that for the introduction, you usually use one paragraph for this. And your introduction, there are two main things that you need to, you should include in your introduction. First is to state the purpose of the letter, and second is to identify the problem. What do I mean by the purpose of this letter, and what do I mean by identifying the problem? I've actually discussed in detail how you can write the introduction. I have several videos on that on my YouTube channel. I would really recommend you go back to those videos and watch them carefully in order to get more details. But in summary, the purpose of the letter is just the summary of what you want the reader to do for the patient. You have to state it. And then you ask yourself, why will this reader need this? <coughs> why will this reader have to do this? 
that will help you to identify the problem. The problem is just the situation on ground why you are referring this patient. Okay, so you have to state these two points, and also these two points will also help you to identify to select the relevant information that you also use in your letter writing. When you are done with the introduction, you move on to the next paragraph or paragraphs and start from the current situation. In the case note where you have visit, most likely the current situation will be discussed in the current visit. So you start from the current visit to discuss the present complaint, the examination findings, the investigations and the treatment. So you have to let the reader know what is happening to this patient now. Okay, when you are done discussing all this in the current um, in the current situation, which may which you may write in one paragraph or two paragraphs or three paragraphs, as the case may be, it depends on the volume of information you have. Don't try to cluster all your information when they are very voluminous in one paragraph. It becomes very difficult to identify information in such paragraph. Okay, so when you are done with the current situation, you move on to the problem or situation so far. Here, what are you trying to do? You are trying to now let this reader know that how long this problem has been. When did this problem start? Maybe this problem started a week ago, two weeks ago, some months ago. You have to start from when it started and summarize and make a summary of how this illness started and how it has progressed to include the symptoms, signs, investigations and treatment that you've given to this patient so far. Now, when you are now done discussing this problem, you can now move to the background information. What do I mean by the background information? This patient might, behave, might be having other medical, inf medical um, issues. Maybe this patient has um, hypertension, diabetes, or other medical issues that you think the reader needs to know. You have to bring them in in the background information. Maybe this patient is on long-term medications. You have to bring them in. Maybe the similar illnesses also run in the family and you think the reader needs to know this. You have to bring them in. The patient's social history, you have to talk about them if they're relevant to the, to the reader. And then when you are done with this background, which you may add in one paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs, depending on the volume of information that you've selected, then you can now finally make your recommendation. Your recommendations are patient future needs, what you want the reader to do for the patient. All right, so what, you are going, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use this case note. We are going to use this case note to practicalize this. So this is the case note we have. And um, I've already got, taught you how you use your five minutes reading time. So when this case note is given to you, first, you first move down to read the writing task. Okay, understand the task. Try to find out the purpose of this letter from the writing task. The purpose of this letter is usually stated here. And the purpose of this letter, as I said earlier, is the summary of what you want the reader to do for this patient. Now, if you look at this um, um, writing task carefully, you can see this is the summary of what you want this reader to do for this patient. You want this reader to this reader to urgently visit and assess the swallowing function and nutritional status of this patient. Now, you've identified the purpose. Next is to identify the problem. Why will this reader, um, why will this reader need to um, visit this patient urgently and assess her swallowing function and nutritional status? This is because this patient is at is uh, has a high risk of uh, aspiration. So let me use a red paint to highlight the problem. If you go to this, go through this case note carefully from the beginning to the end, the, this it's 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 clear it's very clear that this patient is at risk of aspiration, and that's why we want this reader to urgently visit and assess the patient. Now having these two um details at the back of your mind you will now use this detail to select the information you are going to include in your letter writing let's use red paint again to select this information in every letter you are writing you must include patient's name you must include patient um date of birth 
okay now the next thing you will not ask um, you will not ask yourself will this reader need this patient address the answer is yes because this reader will be will be visiting this patient to do this so we have to include the the, the patient address so that the reader will know where he is going or he's coming all right so let's go to this patient's medical history which is the part of patient background information okay now in 2002 these patients were diagnosed with bilateral knee osteoarthritis this information is not relevant in assessing this patient's following function neither does this information put this patient at risk of aspiration now in 2010 this patient was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 2 this information is not entirely relevant, but to some extent, we are writing a dietitian and this might be a problem. So we might want to consider this information. This patient had ischemic heart disease in 2015. This, patient, this information does not put this patient at risk of aspiration. Neither, does, um, um, neither will it affect the assessment of um, um, this patient assessing this patient nutritional status all right this patient also had stroke in 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 2018 yes for people that um, suffer stroke they usually have problem with swallowing so we need to include this information in 2021 this patient was diagnosed of dementia and has made the patient to be confused and um, only understand simple instruction and also this has also put this patient at risk of not um um using um her dentures okay which must have contributed to why she is um aspirating so we have to we need this information this patient suffers chronic constipation this information is neither here nor there if you include it fine but i'm not going to include it but i will highlight it for you you may consider adding it okay so i will just highlight it in red all right that's fine so um this patient has gained weight within six months we are writing a dietitian okay so he has gained weight. this is an important information that might affect this patient's assessment of uh, her nutritional status the current bmi is this so consider adding this detail and this patient is not on um uh, it's not allergic to um to medications or food so that might which which is a an important negative so we may also consider adding this important negative all right this patient has no teeth dentures were prescribed but the patient usually rarely wears them because uh, she is disoriented this is a very important information that most likely puts this patient at a high risk of aspiration so we have to add this. This patient has increased appetite, eats more than six times a day. So somebody that has no teeth and eating so much, eating a lot of junks, the nutritional status is at risk. Um, it's also at risk of aspiration. We also include this information. So you see, this, this is how you select your information. Okay, using those two points we highlighted earlier. Now let's look at the medication history. These medications are not are not um, the reason why this patient is, is having risk of aspiration. Neither will this affect patient assessment. So I will not consider adding this. Looking at the social history, I may not consider adding this. But look, this patient is um, increasingly dependent on nursing staff. So you might take a look at this. You might consider you might consider adding this if you want, but I might not want to add it anyway. Now this patient the patient treatment um, records for the treatment records we just have to summarize. We don't need to give um, details. Okay. So these are the treatment records. If you look at about a month ago, this patient came with chest infection. For this patient to be having chest infection, it it means this patient it puts it shows. Uh, this is a theta sign that this patient is at risk of aspiration. So that means this information is important. But we may not have to write everything as written here. We just have to summarize. So um, I want to use a, um, a gray color to highlight all this. So we just have to summarize this. 
here again this patient in june started having started having occasional coughs episodes of shortness of breath and increased respiration so we we'll also summarize this also in june she also started ha having sporadic throat clearing after eating and drinking we we'll also summarize this all right so this is the most current situation this is the current situation now okay but looking at the current situation there are lots of information in here this patient came in at around this time choked on a piece of meal turned blue became breathless um the piece of food was finally removed anyway and this were the vital signs so we might just have to summarize we don't need to give details okay we don't have to state everything the way it's written here we just have to give details so that's how you you pick you select information very quite easy it's very easy if you're able to identify the problem and the purpose of the letter so it becomes very easy for you to summarize your information now after highlighting the information you are going to use those ones we didn't highlight we are not going to include them the ones we highlighted in red you consider them if you want all right so the next now is to organize your letter to organize your letter is just to follow this pro forma that i've mentioned here you start from introduction move to the current situation the 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 problem or situation so far then the background and finally your recommendation this is the only format any urgent letter always takes so if you get this in oet exam it's a giveaway for you i think okay so let's see how i wrote this letter now this is my introduction this is um um the date the the greeting if you look at the greeting i said yes sir or ma'am this is because we don't know if the reader is a man or a woman so and we don't know the name so this is the heading now this is my introduction i would appreciate if you can um urgently visit um jennifer at high Wycombe dementia home in order to assess her ability to swallow and nutritional status as she stands a risk of aspirating anytime she fits okay so um i will highlight the purpose of this letter i stated it here this is the purpose of this letter okay and then i will highlight the problem or the situation in red so the situation in this letter or the problem in this letter is this so these are the two main things you have to include in your introduction now after the introduction is the current situation now this is the current situation look at how i summarized it why eating yesterday she choked on a piece of food that probably was not properly chewed but managed to cough it out successfully i didn't bother with all those vital signs i summarized it as the patient it coughed it out successfully so meaning the patient is fine now if you would like you can add Coffee it out successfully and the vital signs are not currently stable. You can add that. That's fine. All right. So after the current situation, I have to move on to treatments and um, the problem so far or the situation so far, how it all started. Has there been instances in the past? She has certainly been experiencing similar incidents in the past. For instance, she had a chest infection about a month ago, following which she started to clear her throat whenever she um she um eats or drinks and sometimes do have coughs shortness of breath and uh, fast um breathing okay then after the um problem so far i move on to the background now in the background i think i use two paragraphs here for the background this paragraph and this paragraph the symptoms may be attributed to a lack of teeth now if you look at how i arrange this background information when organizing your information you bring the most important first before the less important so the one that puts all the background information i selected the one i think that put this patient more at risk of aspiration aspiration is the lack of teeth and it's supposed is the absence of teeth it does she doesn't have teeth and it's supposed to be wearing dentures but sometimes forget to wear them due to confusion and disorientation associated with dementia this was diagnosed last year. She had a stroke in 2018, negatively impacting her gait. Okay. After the issue of um, absence of teeth, um, not wearing her attention, the next most important inform information that put the patient at risk of aspiration 
is the stroke she had. Then I move on to talk about other risk. Jennifer, in the background information, Jennifer has increased appetite, eats voraciously, mainly junks, and her weight has increased by 15 kg within a space of five months and currently weighs 100 kg in bracket BMI 31. She is diabetic and has no allergies to medications or food. I'm done with the background information. Now I want to make my recommendation. Kindly evaluate her situation as soon as possible in order to minimize her risk and prevent a reoccurrence. So I'm kind of re-emphasizing the, the purpose of the letter because this is just the recommendation I have. I don't have much recommendations in that letter. So I just have to like paraphrase it here. Please contact me if you need more information in yours faithfully. Charge not. So this is how you, you write urgent letters. And this is where we come to the end of this um, class. Thank you very much, guys. Um, if you really like this lecture, I will really recommend you subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my Instagram, my Facebook on the T-Square OET Academy. You have a lot to benefit to help you to write your exam. I wish you the very best, guys. Bye-bye.